So many of our students have been really inspired by the Large Hadron Collider, the Big Bang machine at CERN in Geneva. What a lot of them don't realise is that you don't need to go to CERN to look at a particle accelerator close up because although they're becoming rarer and rarer with the advent of plasma screens, LCDs, the prices coming down, if you've got one of these old fashioned cathode ray tube TVs at home, you've got a particle accelerator sitting in your living room or your kitchen or even your bedroom. Now the reason that these work so well is because of the design which goes back as I say for just over a century. What we actually have with a cathode ray tube or a TV like this is we've got an electron gun in the back and what that's doing is it's firing a beam of electrons towards this screen here. Now to generate the picture that beam of electrons will scan across and then down slightly and across again and down slightly and across and for a British TV there's actually 625 lines lines that will be scanned by the electron beam in about one thirtieth of a second. Now each time an electron hits the screen and it hits one of these phosphor dots here, that will then give off light and that's how, in essence, we create a TV picture. So we have a high energy electron gun in the back of a TV. In fact, for a colour TV, we've got three separate electron guns. This is a high energy particle accelerator. Now the thing about electrons is, although they're charged particles, if an electron is sitting in one place and you were to measure a magnetic field around it, you wouldn't notice anything. However, as soon as the electron is moving, it creates a magnetic field around it. It's a cylindrical field. In other words, if you've got an electric current, a constant stream of charged particles moving in one direction, you get a magnetic field created around them. And so if I have another magnet that is placed close to this electron beam, that electron beam will be deflected. And what we're going to see is a very spectacular demonstration that explains the fundamental physics behind not only how motors work, but also it's one of the reasons why the planet Mars changed from being a much warmer, wetter world billions of years ago to the lunar-like desolation that we will see now. So what are we going to do in our demonstration? Well, we need a magnet, and the bigger magnet you have, the better this is going to work. What I have here is one of the Alchemax magnets that are lurking around in many physics departments. Uh, they're usually of order of about 100 pounds or so. One thing, if you haven't used these before, um, Take off your watches unless they're anti-magnetic and definitely put your wallets with your credit cards to one place because I've lost track of the number of credit cards I've demagnetized during my teaching career. And so what we have here is we have the picture being created. I've just got it tuned to no picture whatsoever, so we've just got a static display. The electrons are being fired out from here. They're creating their own magnetic field around the electron beam and we're having this picture here. As I bring the bigger magnet closer, what that's going to do is it's going to interact with the magnetic field being created by the electron beam and that interaction will cause the electron beam to be deflected from where it wants to go. Now here it is undeflected and we get this static pattern but as soon as I bring my big magnet closer not only can you start to see some beautiful patterns emerging but I'm now deflecting the beam so much because of the interaction between the magnetic field of this magnet and the magnetic field created by the electron beam that in some cases the electron beam is not even hitting the screen. It's being deflected way off. If I move this away, of course, that effect minimizes because the magnetic field strength of the field being created by this magnet is dependent upon distance. Put it over here and yeah, the electron beam can feel this magnetic field, its magnetic field is experiencing a force but it's tiny. Bring it closer and now the deflection gets so big that some of those electrons are not even hitting the screen. Now you will notice that because colour TVs have actually got three electron guns, one responsible for the red colour dots, for the blue and for the green, that they can tend to have a permanent sort of displacement effect here um, and you may need your, to leave your TV to degauss for a few minutes or even hours. With a black and white TV it um, will degauss much much quicker because of course you've only got one electron gun there. And the same effect will work if we're coming down from the top or if we're coming from the side or if we're coming from here. And the reason all of this happens, of course, is that if I've got a charged particle 
moving in a magnetic field. The charged particle moving creates its own magnetic field. That will interact with the external magnetic field. But the force that the electron or the proton or whatever charged particle it is, the force that it experiences is at right angles to its velocity through the field and the magnetic field strength at the point at the um, point where the interaction occurs. And that's the origin of why we have generations of students with their left hand rules and their right hand rules and waving their hands around like this. The force that the electron will experience is at right angles to both the direction of motion of the electron and the magnetic field strength at the point, which itself is a vector quantity. And in mathematical terms, if we want to model this using vectors, we need to use the cross product of the velocity vector and the magnetic field strength vector.